Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you. So you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Andy Smith, your host with the most 31-year comic book veteran, drawing comics for 31 years. Holy moly. And I'm here for another book look where I take a book off my bookshelf and go through it with you guys. Sometimes it's comic books, sometimes it's how to draw books or books about specific artists. Uh, today it is Drawing the Looney Tunes, the Warner Brothers Character Design Manual. Uh, this book, we'll see when it came out, I don't remember, but I love this cartoony stuff. I loved Looney Tunes as a kid. Uh, let's go through it. And uh, you can learn how to draw Looney Tunes with this character design manual. Let's see, uh, Chronicle Books. This book came out in, drum roll please. Do, 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 do. Of course, why would it, why would it say? 2005. So this book came out 2005, 17 years ago. Look at that, had to do some quick math in my head. Basic elements of drawing cartoon characters, how to draw Bugs Bunny. So we have the basic elements, 10 chapters on that. Then it breaks down different characters. A nice introduction. Basic elements. Let's see. Let me see how many pages this bad boy is. This is almost 200 pages. So uh, I'll go through it. The art of cartooning is exaggeration. Yeah, I think most people know that, but just in case. Uh, misconception number one, real artists don't do cartoons. I do remember saying, when, you know, thinking, man, if I say I'm a cartoonist, are people going to be like, oh, really? Get a real job. And most people, when you say cartoonist back in the day, thought newspaper strips, comic strips, but not anymore. You tell people you're a cartoonist and I say like, you know, uh, Batman, Superman, that type of stuff, uh, comic books. They're like, wow, that's awesome. So uh, thank you to the movies, at least for that. Speaking of uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. All right, getting started. Chapter two. Uh, there's not this book isn't too text heavy, which is nice. Stop looking, listen to the characters. Oh, man. Now, I, who knows? I could have bought this book because I flipped through it and saw this drawing of Space Ghost and just lost my marbles because I love Space Ghost. But um, really nice drawing here. You can see these lines of action going through the body for the arms and stuff like that. Tom and Jerry. I have uh, yet to utilize this book in drawing any of these characters. The line of action, which I've talked about before, just in drawing regular comic books. Your characters have a nice line of action going through them. You know, like you see something like this, and in my mind's eye, I could see this as a line of action for somebody running or punching somebody or even flying. 
Here they're building more. Obviously they're using Bugs Bunny. Great cartoony hand right there. And just practicing different lines of action and stuff. Another thing you'll notice is use a blunt fat pencil. If you're using a mechanical pencil out of the gate, throw it away. It's too thin, it's too small. Get yourself a nice blunt pencil. I use a lead holder, which like it says, it holds one piece of uh, pretty fat lead and it has a, its own specific sharpener to sharpen it. But usually when I start drawing, it's pretty blunt. There's no sharpening at all because I'm just, I'm not concerned with small details at that point. Even a nice compositional line of action through a whole piece. Expressing rhythm and movement. Don't worry, we do get to chapters where they break down individual characters and how to draw them. So if you want to draw Bugs Bunny, we'll get to a point in this book where it shows Bugs Bunny and the proportions and things like that. Because unlike uh, superheroes that are eight heads high, Bugs Bunny is not. So, a good exercise, put a piece of tracing paper over this stuff and just sketch out the line of action over top the piece of paper. Even this has a nice line of action that curves through it because his hips are going one way and his shoulders twist another. So there's a nice rhythm behind that figure. All right, let's see. The skeleton. So it does break down even stuff like this. I can break down and construct figures this way and then turn them into the superheroic figures you see in art comic books that I've drawn. It's just basic, kind of a ovoid shape for the rib cage, a boxier shape for the waist. And I like this. They even show a lot of cartoonists from animation do a lot. I mean, a lot of actual life drawing from, you know, models, live models and stuff. So they can practice doing that, you know, getting figure work down. Because if you can draw the human figure really well, you can draw this cartoony stuff. No problem. So it's good to practice from sports poses because they're really in the midst of uh, nice lines of action and stuff in these still photographs. Building body mass. The characters have to have mass to the body so they look three-dimensional. Even a character like Bugs Bunny. This is showing different uh, different heads, keeping things in proportion, consistency, and repeatability. You've got to draw Bugs Bunny, for instance, the same every time. Same with Donald Duck, or not Donald, Daffy Duck. And same with uh, Foghorn Leghorn. This I still implement when I draw a figure. I'll do these contour lines around the, the torso and the arms just so I know the arms going back and away from us. So if he's wearing a, a, a shirt, so I know the way the, the sleeve should go or glove. So I implement all that type of stuff in my drawing. Block and cube is great to, to keep things in proper perspective. And so you can definitely see where the sides are and the different planes are. Just got to remember the line of action and don't think, well, it's a block. How does that curve with the line of action? Because you can see that it does. And this is Bugs Bunny they were playing around with, but you can see how well blocking something out like that works. even for these characters. 
Tasmanian Devil, Tweety, Sylvester the Cat, Elmer Fudd. I thought I missed something there. Expressing attitude. So as you can see, we're halfway through the book, and a lot of this book is about drawing techniques. Uh, the, the smaller portion of this book is drawing the individual different characters. And everything they say in this book can apply to the type of drawing style I have, which I like to always call pseudo-realistic. From the standpoint of I try to draw realistic, but not photorealistic. But I also am not as cartoony as this, so it's pseudo-realistic. Strike a pose. Expression in the eyes. All this can apply to realistic drawing as well. You just don't exaggerate to the point where somebody, you know, you don't do a drawing in one panel, or I wouldn't, of a face where somebody's like, wow, that's a, that looks like, you know, so-and-so down the block. That That's a real person you just drew. And then the next one, I bounce their eyes so huge that it's like, wow, that doesn't, doesn't fit at all. Composition and staging. So it breaks down rules of composition for when you're drawing scenery and stuff. This is one of the simple ways to break down composition, setting your viewer's attention, just using basic shapes. And this is also about contrast as well to where you want the viewer to look. So if I want the viewer to look here, I would compose my stuff going on around here to kind of help move the eye to this point of the panel. Um, this is basically showing how and I've, I've said this before when I do a thumbnail for a page, all I'm concerned about at the thumbnail stage inside the panels is the composition and how the shapes work with each other. And that kind of relates to this, whereas the Tasmanian devil is kind of like this shape. Bugs Bunny has more of this shape and then a ball they're playing with, it's a ball. But if you use basic shapes like this to design your composition in the panel, then when you break into the details, you'll know it works. And see, so you can see here, if I'm doing a thumbnail and I'm like, oh, I want Bugs Bunny kind of in the foreground here, maybe reaching out to catch the ball here with the Tasmanian devil behind him here, uh, lunging or something, you can just see using basic shapes if the composition is pleasing or not to the eye before you get into all the details. And you can see how there, he takes that and breaks it down here. Finding the focus of your design, of course, that's uh, very important. This is, this is a great tip. Once you have sketched a few layouts of your design, step back and notice how the design breaks out into graphic areas. For example, where are the horizontal breaks in the design, the verticals, are there any diagonals? Drawing in lines that indicate the weight and bounce of the design, where do all the lines converge? Look at these examples. Typical triangular design. This just has verticals, but every one of these heads is on a different level, so they all don't line up. You kind of have a U-shaped design. And then this has a nice diagonal design across the panel to it. using conflict and tension to bring life into composition. You know, this is pretty boring. There's no conflict or tension there. These just add more to each one. 
contrasting values. Now we get into perspective. So a nice little chapter on perspective, very important. This, uh, this is a big fold out here. Hold on. Look how big that thing folds out. But you can see the perspective and depth in it. And then, oh, the back of it's white, so nothing to show there. And we have another fold out here that shows some perspective in the background. All right, they're killing me at these fold outs. This is a house with two point perspective. Nice background here that you could move the camera through with the characters and stuff. That relates more to animation. Oh, a bridge. This shows the vanishing point on the bridge. Each bridge has its own vanishing point, which is totally fine. That just means they're not parallel to one another. If the bridges were running parallel, they would have the same vanishing point. Okay, I see, a, I see a theme. I should just keep the book like this for now. An office here. This is a three-point perspective, if not a little more. See the different perspectives in this hallway and stuff. This is a big daddy right here. Big scene here. Different perspectives going on. Lots of different ones. You can have multiple perspectives in a scene depending on the amount of objects and such in the scene. All right, let's get back. Background sketched out nicely. Think about perspective. You've got one perspective point going this way. You've got another one going over this way. So this is a two point perspective. This has two more points. This has, so you can have different objects arranged differently and they all go to different vanishing points. This is talking about putting a figure in perspective. I probably would have shown this first and then shown all those background examples. Clean up is talking about rough drawings. This is definitely more for animation and stuff because basically you rough it in, you kind of erase it out, tighten up over top of it, and then tighten up even more to you get to this nice clean stage. That's definitely more of an animation thing. Kind of works for penciling as well. Here's a great example. So this is the rough drawing right here. And then... Um, rough drawing, and then it goes to this stage right here. So it's a little bit cleaner, and then over top, it's totally cleaned up in pencil that way on a light box. So I love these examples. So you can see the rough drawing. So this is something I might ink from for myself, but if I was drawing for somebody else, I'd probably get nice and tight like that in the pencils. Rough, tighter. Rough pencils, tight pencils. And this really relates for animation because when they would do animation, they would pencil it this tight and being penciled this tight, it could then be sent to the colorist to do the coloring. But now almost all animation is done digitally. So. Now we get into drawing individual characters, how to draw Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? Uh, the artist must know the character inside and out. Here are some key words to keep in mind. So we go through different poses. I'm, I haven't looked at this book in a while. I thought, oh, here we go, body ratios and proportions. This is the key right here. Drawing Bugs Bunny, this is the stuff you need to keep in mind. 
the height of the head compared to the other elements of the body, so on and so forth. You've got to keep this stuff in mind when drawing Bugs Bunny. If you get this stuff off by a little bit, it's okay, but if you get it off by a lot, it's not Bugs Bunny anymore. Showing a little block and cube. You, they get into the head, face, and ears. Makes me want to draw Bugs Bunny fighting First Man. Who would win? Maybe Bugs Bunny, because First Man wouldn't beat up on a little rabbit. No way. Facial expressions. Teeth and hair. Whiskers. The ears. All these different things you've got to get right when drawing Bugs Bunny. Oh, I guess they don't do it with every character. They must just do it with Bugs Bunny. So I apologize because we're getting towards the end of the book. I thought they broke down every character, but apparently not. This is great for hands, even for doing what I do, more realistic stuff. You know, what they do when they do a hand that only has the three fingers here, they basically combine the middle finger and the ring finger to make it the three, since they kind of work together anyhow. But these expressions all work for a regular hand. And sometimes when I'm roughing in a hand, I'll rough it in cartoony like this and then break it down with individual knuckles and things like that to add the detail to it. Bugs Bunny feet. Man, I thought there was more to it than just Bugs Bunny. I guess not. So this book is How to Draw Looney Tunes uh, and Bugs Bunny. Too high, too low, too pointy. Correct. So it shows even in the tail. If you draw the tail wrong, you're going to get nailed. Yeah, I thought this book showed more than just Bugs Bunny. But it's apparently uh, Draw the Looney Tunes Bugs Bunny book. So I hope you enjoyed today's book look. Draw the Looney Tunes, the Warner Brothers character design manual. I'm not a fan of that because like I said, I haven't looked at this book in a long time and I really thought it broke down different characters like the Tasmanian Devil, Sylvester, uh, Elmer Fudd, Foghorn Leghorn. So when it says character design manual, eh, not really. It's more like here's how you draw cartoony the Looney Tunes way, and then here's how you draw Bugs Bunny. Still a good book. All the rules of composition, perspective, uh, things like that in the book are on point, whether you're drawing comic books or uh, this type of stuff. Check it out. And remember to go check out First Man, my superhero graphic novel, 64 pages of fun action adventure made for everybody the only agenda in my book is to tell a good, entertaining story. So check that out. Link in the description below. It's still in demand, so you can get it now. I'm Andy Smith, your host with the most. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more book looks and when I go live and do a live drawing for you guys. Until next time, thank you and bye-bye, everybody. Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo.